Hello, folks. Today, we're going to talk about Vortex. Vortex, its rise to its horrible, horrible decline. Man, it's, it was as messed up as seeing Toonami go, and I wasn't even there. But Vortex, Vortex had a possibility. So Saban's actually bought four kids, and then he started to actually do something that makes sense. He actually decided to do his redemption. So with that, he created Vortex. He had Digimon Fusion, which hey, <laughs> Disney tried. They called it Digimon Fusion Battles, and it didn't work at all. Wow. But he brought Digimon Fusion, and Digimon Fusion did pretty good. Sadly, he didn't do good on Nickelodeon, but they decided to bring it on Vortex as well later on. But, of course, let's talk about the lineup he got in the beginning. In the beginning, he decided to kick all of it off with Power Rangers Lost Galaxy. If you're telling me you're not going to make money out of this, you got to be completely crazy. Because I have to believe that, of course, they have, with Saban's, money is no object when it comes to Power Rangers. The only weird part is I was waiting for the stupid um, Zord Builder version. It's not stupid, but I'm just saying Zord Builder is stupid. But anyways, I was waiting for them to do the Lost Galaxy Megazord and just release it because they have Lost Galaxy. It's on TV. Why not? Then when it comes to Legacy... When the Legacy released, they are like, we got the mold. We don't actually have to make it. It's right here. But no, they didn't. <laughs> the only thing they did that was bittersweet is releasing the Red Ranger, but that was only because of the 20th anniversary. Good job for you, bastards. It's kind of really messed up, too, where it's like, okay, so you got Lost Galaxy. Um, Nickelodeon, why are you such a dumbass idiot and you didn't allow them to have access to be like, okay, well... We're going to put Power Rangers Samurai over there. If they did Power Rangers Samurai and lots of people didn't actually get to watch it or something like that, at least the good news is that Power Rangers Samurai is able to be watched. Lost Galaxy is good to watch, but the sucky part is that now, because of the advancements of technology, you can tell when it was new footage and when they used stock footage. And it didn't live well. It was very horrible. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that sucks. <laughs> Oof. Besides that, they decided to get a few other good ones. One messed up that was a clunker was WWE. Yeah, they decided to get that, and I'm like, mm, it's not, eh. Yeah, not gonna be good. And of course, they had, was it, they didn't have Tiny Toons. Tiny Toons was a holiday thing. I, it's a bit foggy what they gave us, but they did give us Iron Man Armored Adventures. I'm like, yes, no one's seen that before. It was only a Nicktoons exclusive. Of course, lots of people might have seen it, but not the ones who are watching Vortex. And then you have Transformers Prime, another great idea. Those two are just good ideas. Oh, my gosh, they're good ideas. And I think they had, like, other stuff, too. Oh, of course, they had Yu-Gi-Oh! Zexel, and I'm like, yeah, that needs to continue. Still a good show. And they did something pretty cool. The fact of they decided to do the new episode and then gave us the repeat episode at the end. The, the previous episode got repeated. And I was like, that was a smart idea. That was truly smart. So all was good. I would still say the WWE show was the only one that needed to go. And then all of a sudden, the next year, they changed things. So I think Digimon Fusion was here by now. And Transformers Prime dropped. They got something else. And Iron Man Armored Adventures dropped. They did give us Nuts and Bolts, which that was like a... Mm, like, show. I mean, it's good, but not really. <laughs> it's like, not really. Oh, did I mention Power Rangers Lost Galaxy got removed, too? And, of course, the big real nail in the coffin that started their decline is when they allowed the freaking kids to vote. In quotations, vote. They decided to be like, okay, well, we're going to bring Sonic X back. If you guys want Sonic X back, vote yes on our website. If you don't want it, vote no. And, of course, 
by voting <laughs> results, in quotations, voting results, Sonic X got to have another run. So Sonic X was on at 8 o'clock. Again, Sonic X came out in 2006. Sonic X, for the longest time, which I'm going to call it the kids, the four kids syndrome, because the four kids syndrome is when they kept on repeating episodes over and 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 over over again. Oh, yeah. Note, they also did have Justice League Unlimited, but that also (laughs) over and over and over and over again. (laughs) So bringing back Sonic X, that was the horrible move they ever did. And they went back to their four kid ways. And that's the reason why you guys were declining in the freaking damn place. Sabans did have the rings, but they allowed four kids to continue to operate the way they did, which that's why there is no vortex today. There is why no vortex exists because they decided to go cheap instead of going freaking damn rich and everything. There's like so many freaking shows they could have grabbed and actually had a good moment where they stayed afloat. Like, for instance, Green Lantern animated series, when that fell, they were alive at that point. They could have grabbed it, and there you go. They also decided to actually, they could have decided to get Young Justice, and well, we'll be at at least season five right now. Season five, or it's done. They finished their whole entire story arc. Is done. There's many other ones too, like for instance, Haunting Hour would have been a cool one to get as well. I mean, oh my gosh, that series was so awesome. And yet, no, they weren't wanting to spend a lot of money. They decided to go cheap, and that's the thing that hurt them the most. If they didn't go cheap, if they decided to actually go big and actually get like decent amount of stuff, we wouldn't be in this right now. I have to talk about Wolverine and the X-Men. It's like, wow, if they got Wolverine and the X-Men, especially if they existed long enough for X-Men Apocalypse to show up, because at the end of Wolverine and X-Men, Apocalypse was already there at the end of the series, in quotations, in the season two. Well, in the series, in quotations, but season two. That means season three, they could have continued on, and they talk about Apocalypse, and they would boost themselves because, well, it's part of the movie. But here they go with the dumb bull crap and they're totally dumbasses and they don't want really money. It's like they don't want printed money and they don't even know what the freak to do. Which is like, yeah, this is the thing. It's like you're all going cheap as hell. You don't need to go cheap as hell. You need to go strong. And for Savans over there, he actually donates money like one million dollars a year to sick children. I bet he's have millions upon millions of dollars, and you're telling me. It takes all that money to live. Really? Really, man? Personally, I think you could have actually just donated $1 million, man. Heck, I bet you could have actually have done what CW was doing at one point, where they actually had Kamen Rider Dragon Knight. I was like, holy shit. And if only CW had enough money to actually tell the guys who made Kamen Rider Dragon Knight, here, here's money. Go get it. Go get it. Go get a new series. Instead, no, they've been trying to raise the money, and then in 2013, they disbanded, closed their doors, and now they're complete a shell of what they were. It's like they made one good attempt, a great attempt, and then nothing. Now, if if Sabans would have walked in and just did it again, it's like, Frick, does Sabans even know Kamaran Dragon Knight exists? That's one good question, because if they did, then they would figure out, hey, and of course, they will be like, oh, the tail- toy sales sucked. You know why they sucked? Because freaking Bandai America was dumb idiot when it came to Disney saying, hey, we're going to redo stuff. And then Bandai America decided to go cheap. I would love to talk to Bandai America and talk about those days where they decided to go from very decent to very cheap as hell. I would love to talk to them. I would love to talk to them. It would be a messed up video, chances are, and I most likely would get kicked out of their freaking corporate office, but at least we will have our freaking damn answers. But Vortex, how it ended? It ended very sadly. They did the months before get Spectacular Spider-Man Season 2. At least we got to see the second season 
even though it was Disney piece of crap fault in the first place that we didn't get season two and also get three, four, and five. Yeah, thanks, Disney. Thank you so much. I mean, I get it. Yeah, you want to re you want to renegotiate the contract about Spider Man, and you took the best thing that Sony had to offer. <laughs> It's like Sony had the best thing to offer the freaking animated series. Now, as for the freaking movie itself, it's like the movies, well, they did horribly bad. Well, actually, not really. They didn't do horribly bad. They actually just wanted to do something else. <laughs> they wanted to do something else and stuff like that, which I'm like, oh, well, whatever, man. But still, if Disney would have be- cooled it, Either Disney A cooled it or B honored the contract that Griggs Wiseman wrote. I know, I know you're like, oh, but nah, nah, nah. freak it, man. That was a good freaking damn show. And for you to be a dumbass and cancel the show like that, and then diss the guy who made a decent show, dissing him by not even telling him, hey, your show is canceled, you had to hear it some other way. That is bull crap, man. That is bull crap. But Vortex, it died because of cheap crap. It died because they decided to put cheap programming on there and kids didn't really care about it. That's what happened.